hi hello welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Jess and my camera is probably crooked Damn it. anyway it's been a really long time but welcome to an actual installment full episode of book community where I used to try to keep you abreast of the goings-on in the bookish community but honestly it became exhausting <laughs> it became so much I really don't know how I used to do those like almost every week was kind of gnarly um, I've been doing more like shorter ones like more on one topic but recently it's just been like and I was like okay let's let's try let's, let's save up our energy and let's see if we can make a throwback a retro you know an original kind of book tea video this is obviously not going to cover everything because I don't see everything even if I did it would be impossible to include everything here when I was going through whatever bookmarks or, or things I had saved I was like I'm tired but I have a little note here I typed up some notes on my computer that's why we're sitting at this angle because it's just easier so I can remember and of course um, if you have any additional information if you feel I misrepresented something you have additional sources or something else important that maybe I missed let me know in the comments but we always got to keep it cute now we got to keep it cute okay I'm just trying to make you um, aware of these things because some of them uh, you know what I'm saying so first I would like to throw in some quick things small and the first one is to Saga Press and they publish the Dandelion Dynasty I think that's what it's called um the first book is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu well the fourth book just came out and here it looks like this I will insert a picture and I just want to say if anyone from Saga Press is watching this what the hell is this what the hell is this disrespectful y'all need to reprint that and people should get it for, that's out of, come on now. Y'all don't know what the other ones look like. No, that's unacceptable. I saw that and I was like, very ghetto. I just started The Grace of Kings last night and I'm hoping that I really enjoy it so that I will get myself the UK paperbacks, the new reprints, because I will not be buying this foolishness. So Saga Press, please spread the word, get this to them. They need to fix this. This is an abomination. Thank you. <sighs> Also, um, I've had a couple videos about the ridiculousness coming out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, where some raggedy people are trying to sue, I think both the authors and Barnes and Noble for um, A Court of Mist and Fury, so Sarah Janet Mass, and also Genderqueer, Genderqueer by Maya Kobabi. I apologize if I pronounced the last name wrong. They say that these books are in violation of like their obscenity laws, which they say that these two books are violating. And it's just so random because neither of these books were released this year or last year. Akamath came out, what, 2015, 2016 or something? Gender Career maybe 2019, but these they chose these two random titles and they don't want them to be, they if they're sold in Barnes and Noble, they basically want them to be like, not visible so like in a secret room and that people under 18 would like need parental consent to buy these books so the new thing that was old news the newest thing this is june 29th this is an article from book riot and if you're new anything that i reference um i will have a link down below so they filed the lawsuit in virginia beach but now raggedy ass a Virginia Beach attorney and state delegate Tim Anderson are suing the publisher Oni Press and the author Maya Kobabi on behalf of their ghetto ass client Tommy Altman, a failed Republic Republican congressional candidate, because Anderson claims that Kobabi's book is damaging under the state's obscenity laws. He suggests whenever he was reasonable, whenever he has reasonable cause to believe that any person engaged in the sale or commercial distribution of any obscene book, any citizen or the attorney for the commonwealth of any county or city or city attorney in which the sale or commercial distribution of such book occurs may institute a proceeding in the circuit court in said city or county for the education of the obscenity of the book. But 
the article says, unfortunately for him, he's conveniently left out section H of the Virginia obscenity laws, which reads as follows. If an appearance is entered and an answer filed, the court shall order the proceedings set on the calendar for a prompt hearing. The court shall conduct the hearing in accordance with the rules of civil procedure applicable to the trial of cases by the court without a jury. At the hearing, the court shall receive evidence, including the testimony of experts if such evidence be offered pertaining to one, the artistic, literary, medical, scientific, cultural and educational value, if any, of the books considered as a whole. Two, the degree of public acceptance of the book or books of similar character within the county or city in which the proceeding is brought. Three, the intent of the author and publisher of the book. Four, the reputation of the author and publisher. Five, the advertising, promotion, and other circumstances relating to the sale of the book. Six, the nature of classes of persons, including scholars, scientists, and physicians for whom the book may not have purient appeal and who may be subject to exception pursuant to subsection G. As indicated before, obscenity laws demand examining a work in relation to its whole. Gender Queer is a book published for all adult audiences and the small excerpts making the rounds of social media featuring sex are age appropriate and not representative of the whole of the book. This can be said for A Court of Mist and Fury. Now they're bringing this forth in 2022 and A Court of Mist and Fury along with the other books in the Akatar series have been rebranded. Re, they have new covers and they are considered adult. So if you're looking at the book as a whole and not just taking out excerpts and then I don't think their case can stand because I think with their obscenity laws it has to be like basically there is no other purpose to the work than it is to be obscene and these books are works of art there's a story there's plot there's world building there's friendships there's other things in them including sex and so I don't think that's enough but it's just the audacity of these people because they want to control what their children read that they want to make this like a blanket law and it's bullshit. So now in addition to that lawsuit that was for both genderqueer and Akamath and Barnes and Noble now they're trying to go directly after the author and that publisher and it's just very ghetto. If you want to read the full article of course it'll be a link down below but I just am like when are they when are they gonna let this go? I hope this doesn't go any further. When I first talked about this, there was a woman who was like, it will take this all the way to the Supreme Court if we have to. And honestly, no, this needs to be stopped at whatever lower court they're in because with this ghetto ass Supreme Court, they would probably be like, you know what? If you have not watched my video of me um, pretending to be Clarence Thomas reading chapter 55 of Akamath, I will link it for you because you deserve to. You should treat yourself. But honestly, with that Supreme Court, I would not be surprised if, if somehow this made it to them, they would be like, you know what, I agree. Get those obscene books out of here. So it needs to be stopped now. You stop the bullshit. This country is it, a, downhill. Like, I mean, the it's steep. It's not even a little. I mean, at this point, we just, we're going like this, just straight down. And I need this to be stopped. So anyway, the ACLU has filed, I think, a lawsuit or I don't, you can see, um, it just says we filed to block the original proceeding. I'll include that link too, because someone included this under the tweet. And so if there's any kind of petition or anything or any way to donate, maybe think about that because I know in most cases I feel like the ACLU is really sometimes the only organization that has anybody's back. In America, how sad is that? <laughs> Not the government, nope. <laughs> Not the government. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so that is that. Now we move on to something to me, to me, it's terrifying, very concerning. Like what I just talked about, very terrifying and concerning, also this, and maybe not to other people. So there was a tweet that someone shared. They said the way this quote from this person's Instagram page has been haunting me since I first saw it last night. So the quote is from Emma Quick. It is from a um, the hot sheet newsletter. So this says, book talk is influencing the ways we're acquiring books. Is there a moment in this book that people can create content around? Or is it just a really beautiful quiet book that actually for TikTok, it's not going to work so well. And that is terrifying. This is not just happening in publishing because I have seen people talk about this with the music industry as well as well as artists say that they're um what do you call them? I was about to say they're a publisher. Whoever, the record label managers are wanting them to come up with songs that are going, have a higher chance of going viral on TikTok, which I don't even know how you predict that because some of the most random songs 
and random parts of songs, super old songs, um, go viral on TikTok. So I don't know how you predict that, but I have seen that with music artists and now this quote saying, is there a moment in the book that people can create content around? And in my old ass opinion, that is a terrible way to dis make a decision on what books you should acquire and publish. I think that's fucking trash. And a lot of people responding under it also were very concerned. Now the person whose uh, Instagram this was on is named Jane Friedman and Jane replied to this this tweet and said don't know if this helps or hurts but neither quick nor any editor marketer I've heard speak on this believes authors need to have a presence there at all on TikTok. It's a reader driven phenomenon Gen Z readers especially and they like books that make them feel experience something and someone said respectfully that does not help. No it doesn't. It's not like okay great authors don't have to be on TikTok but you're saying that you are looking to acquire books that have moments specific moments in them that the readers can then create content for that should not be I don't even think that should be any criteria for what determines what makes a good book to acquire and feel free to disagree and, and tell me your reasoning down below but I just do not think that mm, this one moment in this book is really gonna make for great TikTok content, which I know their mindset is, if we have this book that has this moment, that people can make great TikTok content from, maybe they're crying or doing a dance or whatever, and then it goes viral, viral and more sales. Because at the end of the day, publishing is a business and they want to sell more books, which feeds into a lot of the theories that I have about publishing, again, plugging another video, if you have not seen it, my publishing conspiracy theories video, I'll link it. But the publishers are really only caring about selling the book. And that is not to say everybody in the publishing industry does not really care about like the craft and the art of the story. That is not to say that, but that a lot of books we've been feeling have been rushed or they're not well edited or it's literally just the, because of the name, because they just want to sell the book. They do not care. They're putting out a great story. It is just sell the book, obviously capitalism. But this, no. <laughs> uh, I am very not, I am very not happy. This very ain't good. This really not good, real bad. Like, oh no, I just, it's, and someone said, this is not what book talk is. And said, that's not, we're not talking about what book talk is. It's, it's, to me, I'm focused on that. You are looking for only a small part of a story that you think people are going to latch onto and make a quick viral video about that people will forget about you know after whenever however long viral videos last so the original poster said my concern isn't what book talk is I appreciate book talk my concern is what is that directives like this from publishers will cause writers to contort their stories into what they think will be a hit on book talk even though that's often very hard to predict it is like the the things that go viral on all sides of of TikTok I don't I don't really know because just the most random things. Yeah, I hate this. I hate it so much. Uh, if you have different thoughts, definitely let me know. But I just don't feel like this. And I don't know how many um, people who are acquiring books are have the same sentiment, right? This is one person. But I just don't like it. I don't like it at all. Like, why is it not enough that it's a good book that makes someone feel good, that has a good message, because it can't create a viral video? That's not enough. Kick rocks. <sighs> okay, now, staying, the rest is very, I feel like this is so TikTok heavy, but again, we're gonna be talking about TikTok, and this is something that is not okay. This is a little older, but I saw it in my bookmarks and I have been meaning to make a video about it and I haven't. So this is from um, kind of the last couple weeks in June. There was a trend going on on TikTok where, let me find the article. This article is from June 17th. TikTok users are showing readers how to game Amazon's ebook return policy. And obviously Amazon's the big bad, right? Jim Bozo the Clown, what's his name? Uh, uh, Tim Bezos, Jeff, Jeff Bozo Bagel, the clown, whatever his name is, right? We we don't like him, but sometimes it's a necessary evil. Um, some authors, that's their only way to publish. Sometimes that's your only way to get something. I get it. I use Amazon. We, it is life. But 
showing people how to game the system. Now this has been a conversation before, but previously it was with audiobooks, um, with Audible, because if you are a smaller author and too many people are returning your audiobook, then those authors were having like a negative balance with Audible and having essentially to pay. Um, because after a certain amount of time, it's like, Amazon's not going to repay that amount, it's going to come from the author. So I think they did institute more stricter rules with their audiobooks. So people can do that, like they had a limited amount of time um, to return the audiobook. But apparently people are doing with ebooks. And it's just like, the the argument always is not as simple as just use your library because I've had this conversation before it's always over the book internet that it's not as easy as that everyone does not have access to a library and even if they do maybe the library isn't as well funded so they don't have as many things many things it's a nuanced conversation conversation but how but this is not good for authors because again it's always going to be the indie authors or the smaller authors that are most affected. Not to say that you should just go do this to a super huge author because they're not going to feel it, but it definitely is um, disproportionately affecting smaller authors who do not have this kind of money to be paying back to where they are hosting their ebook. Um, so I'm not going to read what the thing is so I don't want to encourage anyone to do it but apparently it was even a hashtag it was called the read and return challenge absolute garbage they were considering it a life hack that's not a life hack I'm sorry that's shit um so they were saying you get a digital book if you read it and return it basically they were showing you how to do that and it not negatively affecting you but Amazon gets that money from the author so authors are suffering and this at first I thought it was like something small but I kept seeing it. So this article then I saw many conversations about this on Twitter many, many authors were talking about this and um, this tweet that said if every single author is asking you to please listen to them maybe don't do this maybe realize that your stance is perpetuating a trend that has real impacts for real often struggling writers. If you finish a book you're not owed a refund. It's, sim it's really that simple that's just <laughs> That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Now I understand ebooks can be expensive. I have I have ranted about this. I get pissed at ebook prices, trust me. But that is not, you just don't finish a book and you're like, okay, let me get my money back. It's not okay. And um, I feel really bad for the authors who are affected by this. Now, I haven't seen this trend personally myself. I hope that it's died down, but um, I just think that's really shitty. The last question, uh, tweets so I'm going to read about this. This one says book returning discourse is really wild to me because a the preview does exist and so do reviews so you can be prepared and b it's basically a bunch of extremely online people using social justice or therapy language to excuse fucking with authors livelihoods as a hack. They don't do this with print books they get from Amazon or at bookstores but they'll do it to Kindle books and when authors go hey I'm actually being robbed here these people act like they're Robin Hood for using Kindle book returns in a way they weren't intended. And then C quoted tweet for some examples of the way social justice framing this as anti-capitalism and therapy forcing me to do blank is manipulative language used to justify actual students from authors and why they're doing this. So I think that's what the screenshot of what I saw and it's saying and someone I guess is justifying saying you're not always going to know if you like a book before you read it. That's a chance you take on any book. So sorry. That is what reviews are there for. That's what a synopsis is. And a lot of, of ebooks do have the preview where you can really read a chapter. So you can see if you like maybe the character, uh, the author's writing. Um, and so someone replied, you can read the fucking preview. It's there for that exact purpose. And they said, okay, that still doesn't mean an author is owed anything. You can change your mind about a book by the end. An author isn't owed anything but you're owed a refund for a book that you read the entire thing. And it said not happening, a, it's not happening enough to be a problem and you can't physically give a drink back. You can a book. I guess somebody was saying about a drink. Um, but you bought it in the first place. The majority aren't returning books to be spiteful. They're returning it because they're being forced to keep a book you don't like. It's really fucking manipulative. An ebook? An ebook? This, like, I've seen that people have returned physical books to Barnes and Nobles and stuff, stuff like that. But it is not manipulative. If you read an ebook, and you have to you can if you don't like it, delete it off your Kindle. Like it's not, is it going to No, it's, it's, it's out of hand. So don't do this, please. Like, don't do this. Don't make it a habit. And it is normal that if you maybe got something, I don't know, sometimes you don't know what you're getting into. You didn't look it up. You didn't read a sample something. 
everyone returns things whatever but don't make it a habit like I'm always just gonna buy ebooks and then read the whole thing and return it or audiobooks it's trash don't do that I think everyone deserves to read but this is not this is not the way I mean if you have a different opinion I mean I'll listen I you know tell me tell me about it okay Whew! I am tired we're at 21 minutes but we are going to push through so the next two things are about two books and I have heard about one more than the other so the first book I heard about when I was watching a live replay um I think it was on Brie or Brandy's channel because I always am watching their replay of sprints and uh so this book is called we all fall down by rose sabo i'm i'm not sure how you pronounce that but this book already came out and um no goodreads please don't do that so this book came out in oh june 7th and it was in the illumicrate box gorgeous book gorgeous frayed edges and so I had not heard of this book but someone was talking about it as the Illumicrate choice and that they went to read the reviews and the reviews were really bad right now I'm looking at it and it has 304 ratings and it has a 2.38 so the main things in this book were I the reviewers were saying the book involves violence to gay men perpetrated by white women. So I took a quote from one of the reviews and I'm going to read it for you. And they said This is a book about the murder of two police officers. Tiny white lesbian Jack knows who the murderer is, her sister. Said sister is trying to pin the murder onto an eight-armed monster girl in order to stir up racially motivated panic amongst the citizens citizenry <laughs> in order to deflect suspicion from her sister who isn't great at plotting jack points the finger at a person she 100 percent knows to be innocent who david a seven foot tall gay black man who everyone is already terrified of by reason of his race and physical size it'll be fine jack tells herself as she uses her incredible privilege as a white woman to frame a stranger he's a professor at the university he must be rich and well connected and able to sort this out so this book also takes place in the American South and spoiler alert I mean I probably put that before this but David does eventually get released um, from jail but the reviewer said that this book ultimately paints David as the villain and Jack the white woman as a hero and there's a bunch of reviews that have a lot of spoilery thing in it and uh, so you could look it up on Goodreads but um I don't think there's a good way to explain that like especially a book published this year when well mm, police brutality has always been a thing but in the last I don't know 10 years it's gotten we've seen it more because of you know smartphones and Twitter you know social media so mm, it's why would you think it one it was a good thing to write and then did no one in the editing process think maybe we should take this out maybe we should change this thing this is rose so they are a white person why 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 and this is this just goes back to publishing and to be fair a lot of um editors and all the people who work in publishing i don't know all the titles are overworked because a lot of people are leaving publishing because they have been overworked and underpaid and I know that they have a lot of work on their plate so sometimes things can get missed I'm just like one in the first place why would you write this and then I don't know how many times this goes through other people or how many people read this story but I'm just like someone missed this that would be like well maybe let's change the story and not try to accuse an innocent gay black man for a murder when you white a white lady did it you know <laughs> maybe not a good idea at the end of the day you can write what you want to write right but that doesn't mean you are exempt from people's critique and their criticism their feelings about it and I just don't I don't think that's wise now there's another book and I'm gonna come back to this book there's another book I've seen more people talk about on Twitter and it's The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix. So I have heard of Rebecca Mix just because Rebecca is usually chronically online and I have seen a lot of tweets from them um, on obviously on Twitter 
but I don't follow them. But they have a book coming out in November and it's called The Ones We Burn. So this book came up and uh, there was a review and then someone made a tweet about it. And so then people started talking about it. So this one people are saying includes reverse racism, where there are black siblings in this book who are in power and basically oppress the poor white people in the book. Um, and reverse racism doesn't exist, right? Because racism is a whole like the systematic, we don't have the power as black people to be racist, like in a whole system against white people. But anyway, in this book, the black siblings have power to oppress the white people. And reverse racism like this is basically goes along with the white replacement theory, like, oh my god, they're going to replace us. Really white supremacist nonsense. So one again, why did you think this was a good idea to write in a book in the good year of our Lord 2022? Is it a good year? I don't know. But there was that review. And then um, also Chloe Gong, who wrote, you know, that popular book, I can't think of what it's called, had a five star review of the book on Goodreads. And I believe she also blurbed the book. So she's a blurb on the front of the book. Once this controversy arrived, I think people were talking shit about Chloe Gong on Twitter as people do. And then Chloe deleted her review off Goodreads but hasn't said anything. So of course, people are mad about that. Um, I think there was another author who blurbed the book that people are mad at. I can't remember I didn't write down their name. But then there's also been conversations where people are angry because it's like, well, you haven't read the book. So how do you know you're just taking the opinions from someone else and this could be said for both books. So I originally was going to do this separately. Um, in a separate video, like, is it enough to take the word of someone? before you write off a book because of course with both of these books people are like okay well I no longer want to read this because this person said this thing and to me I mean that's always your right there's like no rules that you have to still read this if you want to read that and especially if the problems that are being brought up affect a certain group and the person who is giving that review and telling you these other problems are of that group then it's like okay yeah extra extra this ain't good because there have been some instances in the past where someone's like this book is racist this book is something something and they're like a white person or they're not in the affected group and sometimes maybe it's like uh I don't really think that was what was happening you didn't you, you weren't giving us the full story so I think it you know it's up to the person some people may be like I'm still gonna read this because I want exactly want to know what happens and you know that's their right to do that you can read what you want to read um but this just don't sound good. And another thing with, of course, people being upset about the authors who blurred the book being silent. And Rebecca Mix is usually very vocal on Twitter, usually is on there all the time, usually very vocal on book talk, but has gone silent. So of course, people are like, Oh, of course, you're not now you're not responding to the what's going on, which I get. So I don't know. I just I don't know why I'm shocked, but I'm still shocked that in 2022, co like themes, concepts, plots like this are still being written and then not caught. But really my problem was, is with you sat down and wrote this and thought it was a good idea. And then no one else caught it, but really it's with you, the author. I don't know, I don't know. Um, it's not, it's not good. It doesn't sound great. So, Rebecca Mix is also a white. This picture is like the picture she uses. It's like a childhood picture, but I, I don't know. If you have different thoughts about those, definitely let me know, but yikes. Okay, last thing. I think I have one last thing. My mouth is so dry, but I'm trying to finish before my battery dies. Recently on Book Talk, which I'm not really on Book Talk. I follow a couple of people who I just like talk to in real life on Book Talk. So a lot of it doesn't come on my timeline, okay? I am looking at dog videos <laughs> and other things. But apparently there was um, this guy named Chance Terry, who's an audiobook narrator. Um, Thorne Bradley, who's the hot dude who's always chopping wood in his little thirst traps. And then some other romance authors have been hyping up like the surprise, this announcement for Book Talk, but really to romance readers on Book Talk. And then it was finally announced and it's been a mess. So it was called Verba Inc. So basically they announced an audiobook platform that uh, 
is not exclusively for romance books, but it did seem to be marketed heavily towards romance readers. Anyway, it's an audiobook platform where you pay monthly access and I think it may be unlimited, not quite sure. And that was another problem there or not. It wasn't very clear in a lot of things that was going to launch this December. So of 2022. So there's three tiers for authors themselves to buy into or to choose from. So the first tier for authors who have a published work but no audiobook. The second tier is for authors who have a, publi pub a published book and audio files but it hasn't been made into audiobook. And then the third is for authors who have a story but it's not published yet. And they all have different like contracts of exclusivity and how long they would be hosted on Verba and then how long it would take for you to get the rights back. Um, and that the author pays a flat fee after the audio for the audio files after a certain amount of time. There's some basic information about the tiers. For the user, it would be $19.99 a month or if you, um, I think there's an offer before it comes out that if you pay for a year up front, it's only $9.99 a month. So there are already questions because like there's multiple audiobook platforms that exist. So like what makes this so different? What makes this better? Like why would we want to invest in this? Because another thing is they all have sal a staff of narrators that are salaried, but they would be open to contracting with other narrators. And I got a lot of information off of TikTok and I will link you to a video that my name is Marinez, who also has a YouTube channel that she did. And she was pointing out that for people who are willing to pay $20 for an audiobook service every month, they obviously want to know like who the audio narrators are going to be and the quality because that makes a big you know, big difference because people, I mean, that's a kind of make or break for the audiobook, how the narrator is. So I don't think they mentioned who those people would be. I'm assuming since they had Thorn Bradley in there and that chance dude that they probably would be some of the narrators. Um, but it wasn't clear. So another mess to add into this, even though it was not um, clear. They obviously had a live and a TikTok and there was some not good interactions there with the people involved versus, you know, creators on TikTok is that Willow Winters was involved. So months ago, I did make a video. I don't know if I included if Willow Winters was in there. But anyway, Willow Winters is a romance author. And months ago, there was drama because there's a dude named Eros who is a voice actor. And he narrated at least one audiobook for this other romance author named Dana Isley. And Eros has a t not a TikTok, a Patreon where he does it with TikTok, but he has a Patreon where he and his friend collaborate. So his friend will like write stories and stuff and he would like narrate them on his Patreon. He also has had some past childhood trauma and sexual assault that he went through. And he, Dana knew these things. She was friendly with him and with his friend. I forgot what her name is, Jacqueline, who wrote the stories for him on his Patreon. But then it seemed like Dana was taking his trauma and putting it into books. So if you want to go get all of that, I'll link that video because um, I explained that. But Willow Winters was taking the side of Dana Isley and she was having really nasty interactions with fans who were saying like, this is not okay that you're supporting her. And so Willow Winters is attached to this Verba project, which is not good. And so people are of course speaking about that. I did some see some screenshots and videos from like the Chance dude saying, you know, like, um, I'm not going to move forward with this project until you know Willow Winters is removed but then somebody had a screenshot that was apparently what he sent to Willow Winters and that's saying a different story. Today there was a lot being said about Verba. Some of it good, some of it bad and I was still very concerned about the situation regarding Willow and I told my partners look if, if you do not disassociate with her I have to walk away from the company. I cannot in good faith be associated any longer. And I oh And then Thorin Bradley apparently was kind of not nice in his responses to some people, but then he apologized. And then I have a screenshot that said he is no, he is pulling out of this project until, you know, book talk can inform him of a better way to go forward or what's the best way that they can make this project happen that would be good for both authors and readers or listeners. Mess, mess. So, um, Mar like I said, Marinette's video is very, 
informational but she was talking about stuff that they didn't answer just like how royalties would um would work and how and when authors would get paid and information on the rights how it didn't feel like they were very connected to the book community or at least the book talk community because it's like they presented it as is, as if there is no audiobook service out there like oh my god we know what you've been missing and it's like well i mean no we have options so i know that was a big thing that has been all over and if you go on tiktok and just type in verba inc there are so many videos that have different screenshots and interactions with the different people who were involved in this because there were some other authors outside of willow winters involved in it and then I saw that somebody said now it's not happening, but I don't know. So I don't know if it's still on track to happen in December. I think they have like a mailing newsletter list. So maybe those people know better. Um, if you know, comment below. But I don't know. It, it wouldn't sound worth it to me at the beginning, you know, because I like who would for $20 up front at the beginning, like how much how much content would you have how well produced would it be at the very beginning i don't know it just sounds like they're announcing it very prematurely and that they need they need to do some more research and some more work i don't know though but that has been taking book talk by storm and has apparently even made it to just the general book talk drama channel pages accounts whatever you want to call it so oh wow Whew. oh my goodness last thing i did have one more thing and this is about the bookish box I never have received a box from them myself, but I've been hearing here and there that they have been a mess. And so this TikTok creator, um, his name is Kevin T. Norman, had a bunch of bookish box videos. I don't know how I came across it. Maybe someone said it to me. I don't know. Came across my timeline. And so there were just a few examples from their video and just confirming things I had heard about like delays and shipping and damage and stuff. So the examples that were given, and I'll link one of the TikToks down below if you want to go check it out. So. They had the Stalking Jack, Jack the Ripper set by Kenny Mal Carrie Maniscalco, right? And uh, I guess the bookish box said they're all gonna be signed. I think there's three books, I'm not sure. And then they said, oh, something happened. Now only the first book is gonna be signed. But then Carrie Maniscalco was like, no, in my contract, I only agreed to sign the first book. So then that's just evidence of them lying. Like, why would you lie about that up front? They had another book set, some Four Horsemen box set that when people got the book, they were mix missing actual chapters. And this is in like one of the TikToks, like somebody flipping through the book and you see chapters are missing. Um, there are there people have alleged that some of their designs on their books, these are supposed to be like special edition, obviously. Um, and you would think they would commission an author that they look eerily similar to free images taken from canva i don't i don't know i don't know maybe maybe the artist was just inspired but yikes also uh they had a video talking about how they were selling pride birch and i thought it was hilarious because he was like would we even get it for pride we would probably get it for next year's pride because they've been having so many shipping issues but also that they very rarely if ever have queer books in their book box so like hmm now you want to sell pride merch interesting and then they also had a diviner set that kept getting pushed back because of I, I don't know with the shipping with designs and then people finally I don't know if they got the book or people finally got the books and then they were damaged so there's just continuous mess that they keep promoting they keep having new boxes and keep having new box sets to buy but they're months behind on other people's orders and like you're still putting out maybe when you like mm, maybe let's pause and catch up on these orders that were supposed to got six months ago so I don't know I would just tread lightly if you see them come out with a really really beautiful bookish design because I have seen some of them and they do look nice um that you may you may receive a damaged product or you just might receive it in seven months and not in two you know just the prices are high out here in this economy so I just want you to be careful and not wasting your money on a company who has, has not had a good track record in like the last year. Wow, oh my God, this was recorded in under 40 minutes. I am so thirsty. <laughs> but yeah, those were just some of the things that I um, had on my list. As always, I'm just trying to make you aware of these things and 
um, they usually always generate good conversation in the comments. So just be kind and be respectful to other people. And I honestly do want to hear your feedback because sometimes people have a different perspective and I'm like, hmm, maybe I didn't think about it like that. Maybe this thing isn't as bad or maybe this thing isn't as good. You know what I'm saying? But thank you all so much if you made it through this video. I hope it was coherent. I feel like I've been like, blah, 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 like a million miles an hour. But um, yeah, so anything I mentioned, I'll link down below for you to check out yourself. That's an article, a Twitter, Twitter thread or a TikTok video. But included in my description, I always have links to my social media. Um, if you want to find me on the internet, uh, ways to contact me, ways to support my channel. So I have my link to my Patreon down there, any like, you know, uh, affiliate links, whatever those help me. And I appreciate all of you because your girl needs it. You know, we're moving soon, trying to buy a house. Oh, Jesus. But I love you all so much. Thank you so much. Give this a thumbs up, subscribe. These, I, I wanna get back into making these more often, maybe once a month. So, you know, join us here. It's always a good time, I would like to think. But most importantly, stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.